Welcome to Lesson 8a, Circulation and Lift. In this lesson, we'll add circulation to our circular cylinder potential flow, and I'll show how that generates lift. I'll also define aerodynamic circulation and discuss the physical significance, namely the Magnus effect. By way of introduction, recall that if we superpose a uniform stream and a doublet, we can model potential flow over a circular cylinder which we discussed in a previous lesson. Here's what the streamlines look like with two stagnation points. Inside are our streamlines from the doublet, but we don't really care about those in this problem. Instead, we pretend that this circle of radius A is a wall. Thus, we have flow over a circular cylinder. Recall that both the drag and the lift are zero in this case. Now consider a line vortex, which we also discussed previously it has circular streamlines, so for a vortex at the origin, the streamlines are concentric circles around the origin. There are an infinite number of streamlines at various radii, one of which will have radius A. In other words, this streamline will coincide with this streamline, since our cylinder is also at the origin. The strength of this vortex is gamma. To generate vertical lift, we want a clockwise rather than a counterclockwise vortex. So let's define gamma A as negative gamma, where gamma A is what I'll call the aerodynamic circulation. So gamma A will be positive when the vortex is clockwise, opposite of what I drew here. So let's superpose a uniform stream, plus a doublet, as we did up here, plus a line vortex of strength gamma equal negative gamma A. Keep in mind that gamma is positive counterclockwise, and gamma A is positive clockwise. Some textbooks change the sign of gamma when dealing with aerodynamics, but I find that confusing and can lead to negative sign errors. That's why I created this aerodynamic circulation. When we add the line vortex, because of this circular streamline here, it turns out that the circle that we're pretending is a solid wall is not affected. So we have our uniform stream, our doublet inside here, and now a clockwise circulation gamma A. Let's look at the effect of increasing aerodynamic circulation gamma A. When gamma A equals zero, we get the same flow we had previously with two symmetric stagnation points, streamlines that are symmetric both top and bottom and left and right with zero drag and zero lift. I'll mention here that both drag and lift here have dimensions of force per length, in other words, drag per unit depth into the page, and lift per unit depth into the page. Now what happens when gamma A is between 0 and 4 pi AU? Well, we still have the same circle of radius A, now with circulation gamma A that's non-zero. It turns out that this distorts the streamlines. It's still symmetric from right to left, but not from top to bottom. And the streamlines look something like this. Notice that the streamlines are much closer together at the top than they are at the bottom, which implies higher speed at the top than at the bottom. And by our beloved Bernoulli equation, this cylinder does have lift because the pressure at the top is lower than the pressure at the bottom, generating an upward lift force. Turns out that there's still no drag, however, and if you integrate the pressure over the whole body, in other words, this streamline, which we're pretending is a cylinder, it turns out that lift is rho times u times gamma a. This turns out to be the case regardless of the magnitude of radius a, although radius a does have some influence in the sense that we're defining gamma a to be less than this value, which includes a. Now let's look at what happens when gamma a is exactly equal to 4 pi ua. Well, it turns out that there are two stagnation points on this top figure here. They started here and here, and as we increase gamma a, these stagnation points move down. As we continue to increase gamma a, the front and rear stagnation points eventually meet at one point at the bottom. So for this case, there's only one stagnation point, and the flow rises up to it and then falls down from it like that. We can fill in some of the rest of the streamlines trying to draw these symmetric front and back, but certainly not symmetric top and bottom. Again, the drag is zero, and again, the lift is rho u gamma a. This time, the actual lift is larger than it was here because gamma a is larger. Let's keep going and consider the case 
where gamma a is greater than 4 pi au. Well, the stagnation points can't move any lower on the body, so they have to move down into the flow. It turns out that there's still only one stagnation point, and it's directly below the body. The streamlines get a little strange looking. Two streamlines come into the stagnation point, and two go away from it. And there will be some streamlines within this closed streamline that intersects the stagnation point. And the rest of them look something like this, at the top and the bottom. Again, by Bernoulli, pressure here is much lower than the pressure here, since the speed is higher here than here. So this case generates a much larger lift. But it turns out that the drag is still zero, because it's symmetric from left to right. But the lift is still rho u gamma a. Here are some pictures of these three cases from the fluids book by Kundu, Cohen, and Dowling. Notice how close these streamlines are compared to these, giving a much lower pressure here than here. Uh, sir, this is all quite interesting, but is it useful in real life? Great question, Boris. I was just about to talk about that very thing. Uh, thank you, sir. You might think of this as a rotating cylinder in any of these cases. So perhaps rotating a real cylinder would generate lift when the rotating cylinder is in a free stream flow. So the physical significance is that we model a rotating cylinder. But the model isn't that great. Recall even when there's no circulation, the actual flow will separate. And except near the front of the body, the streamlines look nothing like the potential flow model. In this case, for a real body, the drag is not zero, but the lift is still zero. For the case with some non-zero value of gamma a, the flow on the upstream side, including the stagnation point, can be predicted fairly well. But the flow separates at the top and earlier at the bottom. This leads to both non-zero drag and non-zero lift. Inside this wake, by the way, will be some counter-rotating separation bubbles, which sometimes stagger and become a Carmen vortex street. Now let's discuss something called the Magnus effect. This applies to both cylinders and spheres. Consider a spinning cylinder in a free stream. There will indeed be a lift force, and we already sketched what the flow will look like. This is called the Magnus effect, and the lift itself is called the Magnus force. Keep in mind that for a 2D body like a cylinder, the lift is actually force per unit depth, whereas for a sphere, it's the actual lift force. Here's some pictures that I found in Wikipedia. This sketch is similar to what I drew. Here are some interesting cases where they built ships with rotating cylinders that act as sails. When the wind comes this way and the cylinder is spinning, it can generate a sideways force. The direction of spin determines which way the force will act. There have been several ships built like this, and these are just a sample. Wikipedia also has a video of this Magnus effect. I flipped it both horizontally and vertically so that the direction of the flow agrees with the way we've been describing it. Notice how the flow turns downward when the cylinder starts spinning. And notice the staggered vortices of opposite sign. A similar effect happens with spheres, as I said. Here's a soccer ball. This is from a stationary frame of reference, so the ball is moving this way and spinning like this so that it generates a sideways lift force. If you turn your head 90 degrees so that the ball is spinning like this and the ball is moving in this direction, you'll see that the sign of the lift force agrees with what we've been saying. The same thing happens in the baseball, of course, which is why pitchers can throw curveballs. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. One, two, three. That's all there is to it.